I uh, oh. I'm stuck. down to the last few acres of peas I need done, which is awesome. Burning through these acres quick. He's been doing most all of it. So we're gonna blow this up one last time. That should be enough to finish out the peas and then we'll switch over to wheat. Let's get filling. Okay, it's day three. Seeding. We've been uh, seeding peas. Have a little, about a day left. Then we'll finish those up and then we'll move on to the next. But I'm heading clear across what we call going over the interstate. Uh, it's about 10 miles from the farm. I'm gonna be heading west and I'll just show you here. This is the area that was flooded two years ago. This road and they built it up. As you can see, I'm with uh, my uh, trusted sidekick. He uh, loves to go with me. I'm in the 525, pulling a 3850 Flexa coil cart and 57 foot cedar. We have about 500 acres over here to see. We'll get that done and then we'll move back over and we'll get the next crop seeded, which is gonna be probably spring wheat. And then we're gonna also seed some chickpeas too. Just getting started, uh, a little windy out there. Ground's drying up, so no issues with uh, moisture as far as too, too wet to seed. Hopefully we'll get a video of uh, seeding today. And also with this guy. Hey, Kobe, wanna say hi? Huh? You like this? Okay, well I think he's ready to go out. He's at the door, so I'm gonna open up the door. Got about four more miles to go and then we'll start seed for the day. Well, I'm over here now. It's a little breezy. I'm going to do a walk around the back side of the drill just to make sure all the hoses are intact, that I don't see anything unusual, and then we'll start seeding. Everything looks okay. I'm going to get in. Normally, what we do is, before we start seeing, I turn the fan on, I push a switch over here in the cart, it'll run a little bit of product down through the tubes and I'll check each one of the tubes to see if product's coming out. Now that we have that Intelligent Act blockage system, it'll tell me for sure if there's a problem with any of the hoses, so really no sense in doing that. I think we need to get seed. All right, that's my seat. You can drive this afternoon, okay? You don't have to drive to right now. Well, we are seeding, just got started. As you can see, I'm seeding right down the middle of this big field. There's actually two strips here. The one I'm seeding on was winter wheat last year. The other one was spring wheat, which was on top of uh, the year previous year, pulse crop of, of peas. So now we're gonna seed peas on this winter wheat ground, and then probably can follow that side, so it'll be like three out of four year crop. Everything's running just like I said. Intelligent Act shows that all the runs are running, no blockages, no rents, uh, symbols coming up, so that's good. I've got the GPS on this tractor. It's not like the 600 that you saw in the last videos where uh, Casey SIH installed their uh, hydraulic integrated steering on it. It's awesome. It's, it's great. There's going to be probably seen in this video or in the next one it running. This one here we still have what they call the easy steer where it's the motor that turns the wheel. Uh, it works. It's good enough for me. I'm a little bit newer than old school now but uh, no I've been running this easy steer probably for 12, 15 years I suppose something like that but it's great. It's tracking me right down the field. As you can see behind me, slight breeze. Uh, it's got the Montana's uh, pretty much stretched out. You know why the state looks like it does? It's longer east and west. It used to be shorter, but through the years of the wind blowing, it has stretched out just like that flag. It has stretched out Montana, and now we we uh, probably took over some of North Dakota, but don't tell them. But anyway, everything's working well. Seeds along about five and a half miles an hour. Uh, all the runs are running. You can see the screens showing uh, no problems. 
except a couple things with the bin levels, uh, but that's not really an issue because I know how many acres I can see. We're seeding with all three tanks, all three rollers proportionally set so that they'll all run out at about the same time. And there is a low levels that do work. Uh, and so that's not much of an issue for me right now. But I've got my friend here. He's about ready for me to go back outside. You want to go back outside? Huh? Would you like to go outside? Okay, great. We'll keep seeing. All right, MMU, it's time. You gotta show what you're worth. Let's take her to the bin. Get hooked up to the auger, get ready to start loading fertilizer into trucks. Let's start it. That's my clutch, that's my throttle, that's my shifter. Start off in fifth gear, let's just baby purr. We gotta get this auger, the leg arms is manhandling under those meridian hoppers. Let's go. Here we go. You know what's so awesome about that tractor right there? My grandpa James Welker, my great uncle Howard Welker, farmed with that tractor. My dad grew up running that tractor. Guess what? I'm running that tractor. There's a really good chance my son is gonna run that tractor. Been on this farm for 60 plus years, making another 60. That'd be amazing. That'd be 90, 94. We'll get there. If you ever need to get picked up anywhere, don't call Uber. Just go <whistles> Wiggles. Come on, boy. Where's Wiggles? Hey, look at that. That worked out pretty good. It's a lot faster than, than uh, Uber. Just whistle and call Wiggles and he'll come. Like a good neighbor, Wiggles is there. Isn't that how it goes? Backseat, buckle up because Wiggles is driving. That's a lot. Darn. This is really tough one-handed. There we go. All right, Wiggles. Away. I Wiggles, away. Made it to the other truck. Let's Not go truck nice. pool. Actually, we're just moving the trucks to a different location. This time, I can do this. All right, see you later, Wiggles. Man, that guy's cool. Oh, do you hear that? Non-turbo diesel, buddy. Who needs a turbo? Man, that 600 looks good, doesn't it? I'm gonna run this across the interstate. My dad's got about 500 acres over there to seed, and he's actually done about 300 or so. And there's a little bit left in this tractor, so I'm gonna head over, seed it out, take it back here, and then we can clean it up and get ready for wheat seed. And he can finish up the rest of the peas over there because he's got more peas in his tank. Let's go for a journey.
Well, that didn't take too long. Seated on my tank, I'm heading over here to the road, and uh, when I get to the road, then I'll wing it up, and Dad will just keep seeding, finishing up the field, and uh, let's get ready for some spring wheat. Well, there's just a hose here that's just absolutely destroyed. We should have fixed it, we had the shop. That one's not bad, but I'm just gonna take that section out. We'll go back to the shop. I got some tools in the brute. We'll take it apart, get it fixed, and get back to spraying. That oil looks a lot cleaner. It's like crystal clear. That oil was dark. It was old. It needed to be replaced. Hopefully this is a oil grade rubber hose. We'll find out. But it'll last a long time for now. At least get us through planning. It's not gonna rot through by then. No, we're not putting Rotella 1540 in there. We're putting hydraulic oil. I just filled that up with hydraulic oil. Those are our shuttle jugs, so. I don't know what this thing holds. Just put in whatever you find around the shop. Whatever oil, yeah. It runs on everything. Vegetable oil, anything. Now we're doing on level. This is probably a four or five gallon. Oh, it looks like it's about, about half full. I mean, we can put some more in it. Okay, see you later, Brad. Thank you. Mission accomplished. Back to work. Seating in the big bud. Guess who's uh, coming over to ride with me? Well, guess what? A lovely wife and my two kids. Well, the other one on the way. So join us. Let's go for a ride. What are you doing, Taryn? Okay. You're driving? Taryn, do you want to say anything to the camera? No! No! Yeah. How about maybe? No! I uh, yeah. oh. Stuck. I had a pretty good run at it. Could have saw that coming. This was underwater for a while. <laughs> it was dry over there. Bummer. Let's try not to get this thing muddy. All right. We need a tractor. The guys aren't far away. They're going to bring a butt over here. Got to get our Yankum ropes and uh, let's pull this out. I should have known better. I had my glasses on like this and uh, the ground looked dark. I, I couldn't see the mud. It just looked the same color through the glasses. But as soon as I pull them off, it's obviously muddy and it smells really bad. This has been underwater for like three years. All right, well, guess what? We got a third big bud, which means it can come pull me out and it's not far. So dad's coming, leg arm's gonna be here. Let's get this thing pulled out. It's not gonna be that hard, just a little yank right off the front. Should be simple enough. I was running the 600 buds seeding over here not far and I look over and I see that thing just sitting there and I knew right away, he's stuck. Oh, hey, guess what? Here comes Wiggles. Hi, Wiggles. I really like this. <laughs> I think he likes it. Anyways, we got the 435 Big Bud, which is actually right over here heading this way. We got yanking ropes, and then we're gonna hook onto this thing and I think full throttle, right? Just yank, just pull as hard as you can. They probably got like, Letter I don't know. Cater chip. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I figured I'd come over here and see the excitement. Maybe drive something, record something. Nick likes to get stuck every once in a while. And when he does, well, he does. Anyways, I had my glasses on, so I couldn't see the dark mud. Just so. so you know, this is what happens. He's always on video games. I'm trying to drive the sprayer with this thing and it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> Got him out. It's not a stretch to say that those Yankum ropes are really nice. Wish we'd had them sooner. All right, that wasn't too bad. Pretty easy when you got a big bud to pull you. Plus, I wasn't really that stuck. I mean, that's bad, but 
thing is I stopped. I made the right call this time. I didn't keep flooring the truck and go axle to China. Instead, I was still somewhat on harder mud, not the real soft stuff down lower. So when they were able to pull me, it got me up on this hard stuff right here. The Yankin Bro worked great. I actually was really impressed with that thing. It did stretch a little bit, if you guys saw that. It's supposed to stretch and then it recoils and pulls the vehicle that's stuck out. If you guys want to get one of those, you can check it out in the link below in the description. There's a place there to get them. My dad was actually supposed to have gone a little faster track. You're supposed to yank those ropes, so he should have actually probably gone a little bit quicker, but that's okay. We'll learn as we go. I got some mud on here. It's gonna come off. It'll shake off as I go. My nozzles look like they're okay. I don't see anything that's out of the ordinary, so I think I'm good to spray. Yeah, that's the first of many stuck moments to go this year. Though we are dealing with a little less mud. Maybe that's gonna be our saving grace. All right, let's get in. That about wraps up the day. It's uh, almost nine o'clock. I just ran out of chemical, so I'm gonna run her back. I'm pretty far ahead of the guys. I'd say I'm at least 800 acres ahead of them now, so that gives me a good buffer. I don't like spraying glyphosate at nighttime. There's some question whether or not the plant needs to be actively photosynthesizing to be able to have the active ingredient of uh, glyphosate take action and do what needs to do to kill the weeds. So it's probably best to not spray at night, though some guys do. I've done it in the past, but since I'm ahead of them, I'm not in a rush. The weather looks good, I'm just gonna go home. And now comes the fertilizer. That's something that's kind of nice about peas. Don't have to worry about that much fertilizer. Some guys put it on, we didn't this year, cut and cost. You know how it is, I think. But with wheat, you need the fertilizer because you gotta make protein. If you don't make protein, you get discounted heavily and your wheat's not worth hardly anything. So it pays to put this on. It's just a bummer because, well, it's one more thing to worry about. And we're back with the MMU. She needs to work today, so. Let's fire up. Something I'm gonna do a little different today. I'm not gonna walk around this side. This is sketchy. It's amazing how many years farmers farmed with PTOs coming out on the underside of their tractor like that with no cab. There used to be a seat here, they took it off because I guess they like to stand on this thing rather than sitting because it was more comfortable. They did put this cage on here, that is good. This does work, this cover, this protected PTO cover. It's just, I still want to be there. I don't, I don't want to be around that. So, what I'm trying to do, and I need to get a box to stand on, so you can reach around and I can actually turn the tractor on from back here. It's out of gear, and so that way, when the time comes, I can turn it on and off from here. <laughs> wondering exactly what are we putting on for pallets per acre. So we're doing spring wheat right now and the spring wheat is actually a little less test weight for uh, it's a smaller kernel. It's not as big as we usually would like. It's decent size but it's not really very big. So what we're doing is we're putting a little bit more product on to make sure that we have good seed coverage across the whole field. We want to make sure that some of the smaller kernels that if they don't make it then the other ones will make it as well. But we're putting about roughly 68 pounds an acre right now. We have about 90 pounds to 95 pounds, roughly, of just straight urea. So we're putting fertilizer and seed on. And then, of course, we treated our seed with, uh, well, treat. Away we go. fertilizer that means the trucks need to be on their way and guess what there's one of them right over there so my dad needed seed as well and I needed seed he needed fertilizer I needed fertilizer two trucks coming one seed one fertilizer <sighs> we figured one truck go to one air drill and the other truck go to this air drill so then that way we're both filling at the same time instead of one waiting for probably I don't know half hour or so just to get two trucks emptied in one air drill. It would be the most logical decision to split the trucks up. So my dad is actually about a mile that way and uh, you can actually see way over there, just a little bit, but that's the truck I need, fertilizer. And guess what? The tractor just looks amazing, doesn't it? 
all those pretty Thomas lights, they're so bright. When I look into them, I can't see. Here comes the truck. I'll help guide him into the spot where we need to fill into the auger and uh, yeah, it'll be sweet. The poor guy's been stuck in a sprayer and who knows what else he's been doing. Cleaning yeah. toilets. What? Uh, I said, uh, I can't think of anything to say to that. <laughs> trying to think it's on the rhyme, but cleaning toilets. It's been long days. There's a little breeze going on right now. It's been blowing hard all day, but a little breeze right now and how cold it's getting. I would say we're probably about 37 degrees below cold. And some reason I didn't bring gloves. Young, careless, and stupid is what I am. Ah, I'll probably forget them tomorrow too. Anyways, these are working hands. What am I talking about? I don't need gloves. Until then, I'll just freeze. I'll tell you right now, the sunset is just absolutely amazing. And the other thing too, it's not even really that dark yet. And that moon, well, the camera doesn't give it justice. The moon is just absolutely, well, it's there. Well, there we go. Let's take the truck back. We can fill it up in the morning and we got a pickup here as well. Head back, close our eyes for a few hours, get up and get it going again. All right, let's do this.